Protein powder, a widely used supplement, especially if you're struggling to use your nutrition in order to aid you with building more muscle, of which introducing protein powder within your diet can be far more convenient, efficient, and fairly cheap. Well, maybe sometimes, but what if I told you that according to science, you're not using protein powder efficiently enough to maximize muscle growth and that there's an exact way to do just that. Well, in today's video, I'll cover exactly the best way, according to science, to use protein powder in order for you to build more muscle mass. And that simply includes which type of protein is best for muscle growth, how much you should take, when to take it and what to take it with, at least to get the most muscular benefits for your pockets. Now, first of all, we need to understand how protein actually helps us build more muscle. So your body needs the amino acids, since the amino acids are the building blocks of your muscles. And in this way, a process called protein synthesis is spiked due to you taking in enough protein. And in this case, muscle protein synthesis is the reason why your muscles adapt recover and come back bigger and stronger. Now, of course, there's such a confusing variety of protein powders, but the best and proven by studies is whey and casein. And this is simply because these two are best at stimulating muscle protein synthesis and carry a fairly high amount of amino acids. So if you're trying to pick the best type of protein powder, instead of spending 30 minutes of your life that you'll probably never get back listening to the guy at the supplement store, you want to narrow your selection down to these two, and that is whey and casein. And even amongst these two, there's a difference. Let me explain. Now, the difference between whey and casein is that casein increases muscle protein synthesis over a long period of time. And this is simply because casein is a slower digesting and absorption protein powder, whereas whey is a faster digesting protein spikes protein synthesis over a short period of time and has a higher leucine content which is the essential amino acid that we actually need for muscle growth. Now amongst these two, whey takes the trophy and this was also backed up by multiple studies. Now does that completely sideline casein? Well absolutely not. You can still build muscle using casein especially if you keep in mind that these two still remain better than plant-based protein. Now you can still take other types of protein apart from whey and casein. Suppose that you're vegan. Even though I personally feel like most plant-based protein powders taste like crap or else at least that's my own personal opinion. As long as we keep in mind that when using plant-based protein, then you'll have to take a high amount of protein with the aid of foods for essential amino acids in order for you to successfully spike protein synthesis. Now let's cover how much should you take. Now, although World Health Organization suggests an intake of protein powder of 0.8 grams per kilo of body weight, or 0.36 grams per pound of body weight, which doesn't apply for weight trainers, shown clearly by the sports nutrition research, which makes it pretty clear that this number is nowhere near enough to maximize muscle growth. Now again, this also depends if you are cutting, bulking, or in a body recomposition phase, as different values in as far as protein intake is concerned are required within each phase. Now, if you are cutting, meaning that you are taking far less calories than your maintenance level, then chances are that your MPK levels are fairly high and your mTOR levels are fairly low. And we need the exact opposite since the mTOR enzymes aid in muscle growth. Now, making it hard for you to cut without completely losing muscle mass, as at this point, your body will be using your muscle tissues as a source of calories. So in order for you to slightly offset this, then you need to take a higher intake of protein of about 1.8 to 2.7 grams per kilo of body weight or 0.8 to 1.2 grams per pound of body weight. So suppose that you weigh 170 pounds and your daily intake should be around 136 grams of protein. Now, as you can see that this is still clearly way higher than the suggested protein intake from World Health Organization. If you're bulking, however, then your body is less likely to use your muscle tissues as a source of calories, seeing that there's already a caloric surplus for your body to burn off first. Unless if you're the type that always remembers to eat at 2 p.m. And for this exact same reason, a 2018 study suggests that you take 1.6 to 2.2 grams per kilo of body weight. Now again, for someone that weighs 170 pounds, that's a protein intake of 119 to 170 grams of protein per day. Well, what about someone that says, I don't want to bulk or cut, 
I just want to lose fat while building muscle. Well, keeping in mind that your caloric intake is at maintenance level to avoid any form of chances of losing any muscle mass, the figure still remains similar to when you're bulking. Now, you can go higher with the protein intake. Suppose that you're on a slight deficit and your training experience is quite advanced. Going to the high end of this bracket will do just fine. Now, I've linked down below a completely free full nutrition guide, which actually covers an in-depth guide to a diet, including the fundamentals of using your nutrition to aid you in achieving your physical goals, whether that be building muscle or losing weight. Just click on the link down below and get your own free copy. Now let's cover the next tip, which is when to take the protein. So this depends, right? So if you had enough protein from food sources alone before going into training, and there's no need for you to rush through traffic to get home and get an extra scoop right after your training session because you spent most of the time learning about the one hour anabolic window as commonly known. And in fact, here's a study from the American Journal which clearly shows that individuals that took protein in a fasted state before their workout had a higher protein synthesis spike compared to the ones that took it after their workout in a fasted state. But you can still attend to the one hour anabolic window only if you're training or planning on training in a fasted state. So to make it clear, if you're planning on training in a fasted state and are planning on taking your protein shake after your workout, then taking it within the one hour anabolic window is optimal for muscle protein synthesis, which is obviously essential to help build muscle from your training. On the other hand, if you consumed protein from food sources before your workout, then you can take your protein shake anytime. It doesn't have to be within the one hour anabolic window. As long as at the end of the day, you reach your required daily intake of protein. And then lastly, if you haven't had any protein yet up to your training and are not planning on training in a fasted state, then taking your protein powder slightly before your workout is the better option for muscle protein synthesis. So I just gave you different scenarios there to help you maneuver through different situations to help you reach the required intake of your protein on a daily basis that will be enough to help you spike protein synthesis. Now tip number four, what to take it with. Well, if you're bulking, you can take it with milk to take advantage of the extra calories from the milk. And if you're cutting, you can just take it with plain water. You can also utilize high protein shakes if you're planning on bumping up your calories while maintaining the required protein intake. And even though this does slow down digestion, it doesn't increase or decrease muscle protein synthesis. And again, of which this is exactly what we need in order for us to pack on more muscle mass, well, at least from the nutrition side of things. Now, like any other supplement out there, protein powder will not magically give you an insane amount of muscle mass. It'll just help boost your protein intake since this is exactly what we need since we need the amino acids as building blocks of our muscles, especially if you're struggling to meet these daily requirements from food sources alone protein powder will just fill up that gap now thanks a lot for watching and if you enjoyed the video don't forget to like and subscribe leave any questions down below the comment section if you have any i'll see you on the next video